My name is Fred Tulleen and I manage the North 40 Fly Shop in Great Falls, Montana. It's an interesting spot in that it's not as dramatic when you drive into Great Falls as many western places can be, but a short distance from this town puts you in the heart of amazing fishing country. Um, within a radius of Great Falls, there's so many different places to fish, so many things to do. Um, it's grown on me. The more time I've spent here, the more and the more I've you know branched around the, the area, the, the better it's gotten. Um, there's also a bunch of great folks in this town, so I, I definitely love living here. I essentially started over at what is uh, we're calling now our East location, and uh, 2015 was the first year that I came on full time. Um, it was the first summer I spent in Montana where I wasn't in Alaska or elsewhere. And uh, I've been there, um, or basically spent five summers there, or five seasons at that, that location, and now we're at our new West store. So I'm just uh, in, moving through our second full season in the West Great Falls location. Well, my first true fly fishing experience was uh, in the Beartooth Wilderness in Montana in, uh, well, let's say quite a few years ago. I was leading a backpacking trip of uh, 15, 16 year olds from Wisconsin and we spent three weeks backpacking in the Beartooths and I brought along a pack spin fly rod combo. Ended up uh, using the fly rod portion, never touched the spinning reel, had a blast catching fish on dry flies and thought fly fishing was pretty cool. I think the most uh, interesting thing about it to me, um, besides just all the facets of figuring out what the fish are eating or how to present a fly and, and so forth is the the element of it just creates a situation where you're just completely immersed in your activity. And there's nothing else that, that I do or that I know of that can just completely consume me the way fly fishing does where, you know, time ceases to matter. You can get so focused that, you know, hours go by that seem like minutes. Um, you know, sometimes I come home and I thought, well, I was just going to go out for an hour or two and it turns out to be five or six or you know, or more, and my wife's like, how can you just go for that long? And it's just, it is, it's just a consuming, super awesome flow state that you can get into when you're, when you're in the zone of fly fishing. My perfect day is to go out in the morning and start, you know, swinging some flies with my spare rod and then switching over and catching a few fish on nymphs. And then if there are fish rising to fish, target fish on dry flies, and then when that's over, I might go back to switch and swing in the streamer again. So uh, a perfect day is doing them all in one day. Uh, but then obviously, depending on which species you're targeting or where you're going, um, certain elements of, uh, or certain techniques might be the preference for, for a window of time, but I like it all. Of all the fish and all the species that I've fished for in, in the years, um, most special I would say were wild Alaskan rainbows. Um, especially the big ones that are available on some particular rivers like the Kenai or the Naknek. Um, they're just an amazing creature and uh, I will always hope to spend a little bit of my season fishing for those fish wherever I happen to be living. One particular species of fish that I have not caught is an Atlantic salmon. And I would love, whether it's in Canada, Iceland, Greenland, Eastern Russia, Norway, I don't care where I go, but I need to go somewhere and catch a wild Atlantic salmon. Well, one of the interesting things, being a guide for many years, I mean, one of the neatest things is you actually get to spend time with people when they're having fun and you get to facilitate them in, you know, on basically having some of the best days of their life when they catch a big fish or a certain thing or, um, I mean, it's just an awesome, awesome thing to do. In the fly shop, our, our window of engagement with people is a little shorter, but I love it when new people come in, I can get them set up with a fly rod, maybe give them a casting lesson, show them some place to fish, and then they come back in and tell me that they had an amazing time. Um, I mean, there's, it's a shorter engagement window, but we have people that we see time and time again. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's awesome to, to participate in helping people have fun in the outdoors. Sometimes people think it's an expensive sport, which when you compare it to uh, owning a walleye boat and having the, all the rods and things that they do, I think it's pretty inexpensive. Um, but it's also, if you don't have a mentor to help you out or you don't come to a fly shop where someone's willing to give you some instruction um, beyond just selling you gear, it's, it's pretty challenging. So that's one of the things that we try to do is, is break down that barrier and, and provide 
you know, that extra level of um, instruction. Um, I always say you can't learn to cast unless someone shows you how to do it, or you can't just practice until you know what you're actually practicing. And I think it goes a long way in helping them ultimately enjoy the sport and then keep coming back. We have roughly 2,000 different fly patterns in our fly shop, which is a lot. And people obviously come in and ask the obvious question, what's, what's the fly I should buy or what's the best one? And the answer obviously is that we have all these flies because they're all the best one at a certain time. Um, what I encourage people to do when they're just starting is provide a little bit of information in that, you know, let us know where you're actually gonna go. So if you're gonna go to a small stream or you're gonna go to the Missouri River or you're gonna go fish a lake, I mean, that selection of flies is gonna be a little different. These days you can get so much information so easily that it's almost not fair. Um, but I guess one of the differences, I came from a time when you actually had to fish and fish and fish to, to learn and to get better at it. Um, so a lot of people are always looking for those shortcuts and we're more than happy to provide some of them with information and, and so forth. But the bottom line is you don't get better unless you actually get out and participate.